Hi, hello friends. This is R. Karthikeyan doing MD Medicine from MAMC. Uh, we have started a YouTube channel called Medicine Sketchified. Like we will be discussing and explaining all the medical concepts and facts with interesting cartoons and sketches. So be ready. So let's move on. We'll be seeing a series of lectures on rheumatology. Actually, rheumatology is clinically fascinating as it involves multitude of systems as well as whole lot of clinical features can be mapped to their pathogenesis. That makes rheumatology even more interesting. So our work here is just to take out those interesting facts of, out of rheumatology and make it interesting. Okay. So first topic for the day is vasculitis. So, what do you mean by vasculitis? Anything with itis means inflammation. So here, blood vessels are getting inflamed. Okay. So here is the most famous classification followed for vasculitis. You can see an image of a boy wearing a chapel and walking up the hill from large art, large vessel iota to medium sized artery and then to arteriole and then to capillaries. So we can remember for chapel hill classification of vasculitis. Okay. So what does this classification emphasize on? First thing is the involvement of large vessels. So large vessels, we can have two main arteritis, uh, vasculitis, Akayasus and Jainsa. And medium vessel may polyarteritis nodosa and Kawasaki's. And small vessel vasculitis is actually a separate session, which we'll be seeing de in detail afterwards. So, for time being, we can remember uh, vaginal granulomatosis as well as jerk straws and microscopic polyangitis. So, what should we get from this classification? Main thing is here we denote capillaries. So, we know glomeruli. Glomeruli are nothing but specialized penetrated capillaries located in the kidneys. So, any glomerulonephritis, vasculitis causing glomerulonephritis will definitely come under small vessel vasculitis. Medium vessel vasculitis can never, can never cause glomerulonephritis. So, this will be confusing because in polyarteritis nodosa, you might find hematuria. Same hematuria may occur in small vessel vasculitis. But what is the differentiation? This is the causing glomerulonephritis. So if glomerulus is inflamed, the RBCs passing through the inflamed glomeruli will be ruptured and they form cast when they form to uh, pass through the tubular lumen. So RBC cast in urine differentiates hematuria due to small vessel vasculitis with from medium vessel vasculitis. One thing. Next. Then you will ask one question that why hematuria occurs in polyarteritis nodosa? It is not due to inf involvement of glomeruli. It is just due to skenotic lesions in the kidney producing portion of infarction in a uh, region of kidney. See, a portion of kidney becomes infarcted. So that will cause hematuria. There you can't find RBC casts. Okay. And uh, same time involvement of one is kidney uh, glomeruli as well as involvement of pulmonary capillaries. What is a pulmonary capillary? Alveolar capillaries. So, involvement of pulmonary capillaries and uh, glomerulonephritis is seen most in small vessel vasculitis. Okay. okay, let's see in detail about one of the large vessel vasculitis. We'll uh, see with the start with the pathogenesis. Hmm. This is, a, this is a large vessel. So, in this large vessel, three layers of a vessel. One is intima, media, adventitia. So, what happens in uh, large vessel is, is, in some genetically susceptible patients, what happens is, normal antigens present in the tunica adventitia are considered as foreign or autoantigens. Their immune system starts attacking these antigens. What happens is, first, for any antigen to be attacked by the immune system, first it should be presented by the antigen-presenting cell. 
How uh, what is antigen present in cell here? It is the dendritic cell. So this star-shaped cell is the dendritic cell. This presents this auto antigens to the T cells. Okay, so this is a T cell. So uh, what happens is this is a T helper one cell, TH1. TH1 causes cell mediated response. So what does this cause? It will cause activation of this T cell and proliferation of multitudes of T cells will come to the point of inflammation and they will start secreting cytokines. One of the most important cytokines produced is interferon gamma. What does this interferon do? So T cells will cause will call some other cells for help. Cell mediated immunity may if they secrete interferon gamma, it will call the most important cell the kidney shaped nucleus, which is nothing but a macrophage. Macrophage come to the point of rescue. They will start secreting cytokines to destroy the autoantigens. They can't. So now what happens? The macrophage becomes powerful by increasing their nuclear machinery as well as increasing their cell organs. So by becoming powerful, this cell is known as epithelioid cell, which is nothing but hyper-functioning macrophage. So what happens next is now multitudes of epithelioid cells join hands to destroy this autoantigen. So if they join hands, then that forms a multinucleated chain cell. Okay, a multinucleated chain cell is formed at the site of inflammation. This chain cell secretes a lot of cytokines again and calls a collar of lymphocytes around them. So a collar of lymphocytes around the chain cells and macrophages. So what happens is these chain cells secrete lots of cytokines to form a collar of lymphocyte around them. So this region consists of lymphocytes, macrophages, epithelioid cells, large giant cells. This is a granuloma. Thus a granulomatous inflammation is going on in large vessel vasculitis. In both this uh, vasculitis, this is the pathogenesis. So, how can we relate this pathology to mental asthma? This granuloma is formed. Where it is formed? It is formed in the adventitia. It will form from the adventitia. It will invade the tunica media. So what happens is, see this. It forms in the. Uh, it forms in the adventitia and involves the media. So what happens? This portion of media is destroyed. So this weakens this portion of the vessel wall. If a portion of vessel wall is weakened and if blood flows through shear stress, as this is the large vessel now. So if blood flows through large amount of stress, that time this portion of vessel might balloon out, forming a aneurysm. So aneurysm can be formed in this large vessel vasculitis. See this aneurysm is getting formed, a true aneurysm. Okay, so if it forms near the aortic root, see aortic aneurysm is getting formed, and see if it is formed near the aortic root, what happens? This aortic valves, while closure, they can't close completely since it is dilated now. So what happens is blood pumped from the heart comes back into the heart again. That is called aortic regurgitation. So these regurgitant lesions will just cause volume overload and left ventricular hypertrophy and dilatation simultaneously. So this will accelerate the process of congestive cardiac failure. So this might happen in large vessel vasculitis. One thing. Next, what happens is we saw if this portion of tissue is destroyed. What if this portion of tissue is destroyed and simultaneously it is repaired by fibrous tissue. So any inflammation will be followed by uh, repair. Healing and repair takes place and uh, production of extracellular matrix, fibrous tissue, 
fibroblasts will come to the point of rescue and they'll produce lots of extracellular matrix and fibro, uh, fibrous tissue and the intimal layer is also getting stimulated and it will also produce lots of cells thus the lumen of the large vessel is getting narrowed so this leads to luminal occlusion and this will produce symptoms of stenosis stenotic or vascular insufficiency symptoms will be produced due to this uh, uh, pathology so this is how we relate pathology to many clinical features so what happens next thing is this advantageous involved means due to fibrous tissue deposition it is getting stiffened we'll see afterwards then so see the blood flow is going from the heart in the upward direction okay this vessels are facing upwards so one this vessel is facing at an acute angle so this vessel faces lot of stress so the most common vessel involved in this kind of vasculitis will be this vessel because it undergoes lots of stress normally itself so accompanied by inflammation it will easily be injured and inflammation will start so most common vessel involved in takayasu arteritis is left subclavian artery no need to memorize these facts if you just think logically some facts will be understood okay let's go to clinical features of takayasu so what happens what i or how will i see takayasu is takayasu like take it as aortic arch syndrome a a yes and why i keep it for young aortic arch syndrome in young females characteristic of takayasu so why i am saying young meaning age difference separates takayasu arteritis from other large vessel vasculitis which is nothing but jain cell arteritis okay so next thing we will see uh, detail of the clinical features so see this is the left heart left heart forming aneurysms are formed aortic regurgitation occurring which might cause angina consist of cardiac failure and see hypertension why hypertension is uh, seen two reasons we can attribute one is this is a stenotic pathway so blood flowing through the stenotic pathway will produce pressure overload in the left ventricle so left ventricle will undergo hypertrophy and this causes pressure overload and increased systemic Uh, BP. So hypertension. One thing. Next thing is same stenotic lesions might occur in the renal vasculature also. This causes decreased blood flow to the kidney. Blood flow to the kidney. Renal ischemia happens means that will stimulate renin-angiotensin-aldosterone axis. That will in turn cause hypertension. That is renovascular hypertension if it is caused due to renal insufficiency. Okay, then what happens is aortic uh, root we have finished. Then we are going to aortic arch. Aortic arch is getting stiffened. So what we have written in physiology that Winkelsel effect, the elastic recoil of the aorta pumps the blood in the forward direction and it produces the pulse. Okay, the pulse diacritic uh, sorry pulse waveform is produced due to this elastic recoil. Now this aorta is stiffened. So can the pulse can be produced properly? No. either pulse is absent or pulse is reduced so we call this disease also as pulseless disease okay then see the inflammation doesn't take a continue con continuously it skips skip lesions are formed this is true to arthritis as well as jain cell arthritis okay then see involvement of this artery this artery is carotid circulation if carotid circulation may if you get stenotic lesions then decreased blood flow to the brain will cause light headedness and transient ischemic attacks strokes in very minimal amount of cases okay so this can happen and why am i why i have drawn this uh, step diagram so the most common sign in takayasu arteritis is brui okay whenever blood flow turbulently through a stenotic lesion it will produce vascular uh, auscultatory sound is known as bruit where can we uh, auscultate for this either in the carotid region 
और इन द सुप्राक्लाविकुलर और इंफ्राक्लाविकुलर एरियाज में वी विल फाइंड ब्रूइ व्हिच इज कैरेक्टरिस्टिक एंड मोस्ट कॉमन साइन ऑफ टकाइस आर्टरीज ओके देन वी आर गोइंग टू वी आर गोइंग टू सी द इन्वॉल्वमेंट ऑफ सबक्लेवियन आर्टरी सबक्लेवियन सॉरी सबक्लेवियन आर्टरी द इन्वॉल्वमेंट ऑफ सबक्लेवियन स्टेनोसिस विल कॉज if increased workload in one of the limbs will cause vascular insufficiency in that time reduced blood flow will cause pain in the limbs so that is known as claudication pain vascular claudication pain okay so uh, claudication pain will be happening next thing is how about involvement of right subclavian and left subclavian left is most commonly involved since i told this reason so if one is stenotic and one is for a normal then that means bp will be unequal in both the upper limb so this unequal bp in both upper limbs mean that there is a chance of takaz arteritis and in turn you should go and auscultate the supraclavicular infraclavicular carotid areas to find out any bruy okay then next thing is um yeah this thing then it can also cause lower limb claudication due to stenotic lesions involving the iliofemoral vessels so that can also cause lower limb uh, claudication okay then what is this artery this is the uh, blood the blood supply to the intestines okay just assume it as intestines uh, so uh, blood supply reduced blood supply to the intestines will cause pain especially postprandial pain abdominal pain will be there so that's in concise if you see what and all we have seen in clinical features so claudication pain going on aortic aneurysms aortic regurgitation angina congestive cardiac failure hypertension and due to involvement of aortic arch and involvement of uh, cerebral circulation involvement of subclavian circulation and involvement of mesenteric as well as renal circulation and lower limb circulation so that the single diagram we have seen the clinical features and with the diagram we have connected the pathological pathology with clinical medicine okay next thing is laboratory findings what laboratory findings you can expect in uh, takayasu's arteritis so it is a chronic inflammation so what will be elevated most in common thing elevated is erythrocyte sedimentation rate actually you should remember it is more for chain cell arteritis more than this because any chronic inflammation will cause elevated gsr but in chain cell arteritis it is more critical and it will cause elevation more than hundreds okay then about rbcs what are the uh, uh, abnormality we can see is anemia any uh, anemia anemia chronic disease because it is chronic inflammation causing anemia next platelets actually they say in this uh, condition platelets are sort of raised like uh, are about 5 lakhs okay that's all next coming to the diagnosis diagnosis gold standard choice is angiography to delineate the vessels as well as stenotic lesions okay the thickening of vessels we can see clearly next treatment treatment actually large vessel vasculitis best responsive to uh, steroids are one is dynsel arteritis and the next thing is this takayasu but if stenosis goes too much then we will go for surgical options like if aortic regurgitations are going on we will go for aortic re aortic valve replacements as well as if stenotic lesions are going on here we will go for angioplasties to stents to dilate the stenotic vessel so uh, vasculitis with most uh, surgical uh, intervention is this takayasu arteritis so thus we have seen the entire pathogenesis clinical features and treatment investigations in this large vessel vasculitis we will see hope you enjoy this lecture we will see uh, remaining lectures detail afterwards